like I owe everybody an apology. For months, maybe even a full year, I've come out here and spoke as Roman Reigns, and I said a lot of things, you know. I said that I'd be here every single week. I said I'd be a fighting champion. I said I was going to be consistent, and I said I was going to be a workhorse, but that's all lies. It's a lie because the reality is my real name is Joe. And I've been living with leukemia for 11 years. And unfortunately, it's back. And because the leukemia is back, I cannot fulfill my role. I can't be that fight champion. And I'm going to have to relinquish the Universal Championship. And I'm not going to lie, I'll take every prayer you can send my way, but I'm not looking for sympathy. I'm not looking for you to feel bad for me. Because I have faith. When I was 22 years old, I was diagnosed with this. And very quickly, I was able to put it in remission, but I'm not going to lie, that was the hardest time of my life. I didn't have a job, I didn't have any money, I didn't have a home, and I had a baby on the way, and football was done with me, but you want to know who gave me a chance? The team that gave me a chance was the WWE. For the first time in four years, the crowd are all on Roman Reigns' side. No, this is a serious matter after all. Everyone's going to feel bad for people. This right here was the final time the shoe bump
ever done. Emotional. Roman Reigns, ladies and gentlemen. He will be undergoing cancer. And I wish him all the best. You know, we can come on here and, you know, us fans, we can all come on here and, and joke around and bash Roman and pick on Roman. We, we can do that. We can do that. Like, we, 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 we can come on here and do that all we want. But tonight was a very serious matter for Roman Reigns. This is not storyline, this was not scripted, this was this is real life. And you know I know I know how Roman I know how Roman feels. Going through cancer, leukemia, his cancer. Like I know his pain because I I've been through that before. Not me in general, but I've been through it before. I've been through watching. I've been through watching my own family members pass away from cancer. Like back in 2016, when my grandmother passed away through cancer, and I was the, and I was there watching her slowly part, slowly, slow, slowly and surely pass away. I had to watch her final breaths, and trust me, it, it, trust me, it's it's not a good feeling. It's not a good feeling to hear that people that love you a lot go through cancer. And honestly, cancer is one of the worst things to ever go through in their lives. And I've lost two family members through cancer, and so I know how Roman Reigns feels. I wish him all the best. I wish him all the very best in his on his journey to, to survive cancer. My thoughts and prayers are out to you, Roman. We are back once again, guys, right here on the channel, and we're going to be talking about Monday Night Raw. I tell you what, Monday Night Raw, you know, it still wasn't a good show, but I will give. I will give Raw credit. It did give us some very entertaining and good spots. So, I will give them that. I'll give them that at least. Finn Balor takes on Bobby Lashley. And honestly, nobody would have cared for this. Finn Balor got the victory here. And, uh, well, so much for... You know, honestly, so much for um, Bobby's heel turn, I guess, that it feels very weird to have him lose. But, you know, did anyone care for this? I don't think so. Ruby Wright versus Sasha Banks. This is Sasha Banks' return match, and honestly, this didn't make me very happy. You know me, I'm a big Sasha fan, and... And the thing that pisses me off so much is that they actually have her lose her return match. Sasha Banks. Of all people, you do this to Sasha Banks. She comes back from an injury which was, was unknown. She was gone. She, she, left, she went away for a few weeks, which was unknown. And then you bring her back last week. And then now you put her in this singles match with Ruby Wright and she takes the pin. Honestly, if you were going to have Sasha's team lose ahead of Evolution, which is next week, you could have at least picked Bailey, but you picked Sasha. Someone who comes back from whatever it was, and then she loses. Honestly, that didn't make me very happy. It was a decent match, but it just didn't make me happy that they had to have Sasha Banks lose in her return. Brothers of Destruction and DX, you know, it's, I just don't want to go, you know, honestly, 
sure it's great for some people to say, oh, we've got the Brothers of Destruction returning, and then we've got DX, we've seen Shawn Michaels make his return. But honestly, I just don't care for this. I don't really care for this. Like, sure, all four of these men, well, I should say three of them, because one of them's a Hall of Famer. Sure, H and Taker and Kane are all future Hall of Famers in their own right, but this is just something I'm not interested in. I'm just not interested in it. I'm just being honest with you guys. I'm not interested in it. And Shawn Michaels is coming out of retirement. Sure, that's going to be great to see, but honestly, we won't... Honestly, it's it's a slap in the face to us fans who have been wanting to see him back for a long time. He should have he should have come came out of retirement in the USA, not in not in Saudi Arabia. You know, I just want people to understand that. Paul Heyman came out to cut a promo, and he talked about Roman Reigns and how he wishes him all all the best. But he, but he also claims that Brock Lesnar can easily fill in for Roman Reigns. No, bro, no Brock. No, no Paul. Brock Lesnar should not be winning the Universal Championship. This is WWE's chance to right the wrong that they have been making for the past two years with Braun Strowman. This is their chance to put the title on Braun. This is their time. This is their chance to do it. Braun confronts Paul Heyman, but then he gets attacked by Drew McIntyre with a Claymore kick. Now, Braun Strowman is now being booked as a face again, which is great. And I will give WWE credit. They have also fixed that as well. They've fixed... They've right the wrong there. They made Braun Strowman a face again, and and that's the way it needs to be. It's the way it needs to be, and it needs to stay that way. Braun Strowman should not be turning heel. He should only turn heel when it matters. He shouldn't be turning heel just because of one guy. But Braun Strowman is back as a face, and that is really good to see. Elias takes on Apollo Crews. Elias gets the victory here. There was really nothing to this, you know. Didn't really, wasn't really interested in this. But Elias, he comes back out. Because he said that he was so happy about his victory, he wanted to perform for the fans. And out comes Baron Corbin. And, you know, honestly, I actually liked this. I actually, I actually liked this promo. This back and forth between Elias and Baron Corbin, and it's just something I just thought it was entertaining. Two minutes of an entertaining segment. Elias, you know, singing a song, poking fun at Baron Corbin that he was once a guy on the rise. He was he was winning matches. He was on the rise, and there was nothing more than Stephanie McMahon's lapdog, pretty much. And. Baron Corbin orders Elias to leave the stage because he doesn't doesn't want him to sing anymore. So he cuts out his microphone, and Baron Corbin tells Elias to leave. Elias had no choice, but Elias came back, and then he delivered a guitar shot to the back of Baron Corbin. Ladies and gentlemen, Elias has just turned face. And 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 I, and I and and I think it's great. This is perfect timing. I think this is perfect timing for Elias to finally become a babyface. Sure, people can say, "Oh, he's a natural heel." Sure, you can say he's a natural heel and all, but you know, this guy, he he need this guy. He's just so good. He's so well liked. What is there not to? What is there to hate? I I think this is. Good. I think I'm okay with Elias becoming a face. Let's see how the, what how, how this goes. And yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to it. To seeing how Elias goes as a babyface. 
now Corey Graves... Now Corey Graves has a reason to hate Elias. Because we've all been complaining, like, majority of the fan, Like, if, if, if the fans, you know, have a brain, they would realize that Corey Graves, for some reason, for some reason, doesn't really like Elias. But Renee Young and Michael Cole do like Elias. Well, now... This face turn has kind of fixed the commentary here. That's pretty much how I see it. I pretty much see it as this is a way to say, okay, now Corey Graves has a reason to hate Elias, and now Cole has a right to love Elias, because now Elias is a face. I, th I think that's one of the reasons why, but, uh, but also I think it's because he's so over with the crowd. But... Again, it's like I said, I am perfectly fine with Elias becoming a baby face. Ronda Rousey and Nikki Bella contract signing. I didn't really enjoy this. Now, first off, I know I had a went on a bit of a tangent with Ronda Rousey and Nikki Bella's segment last week, but I want to take some of it back because I just because because after my little rant. I ended up watching the segment just to see how it all played out. And I want to say I give Ronda credit because it was actually a pretty good segment. So I take back what I said about the segment on my review last week saying I just didn't care for it. I made, I, I made, I, I made it sound like I just didn't enjoy anything they said. And, and honestly, I did. I really liked the line when Ronda told Nikki the only thing you broke down was to Johnson's bedroom. So I do take back. So I do uh, want to take bit, revert back my bitterness on that week, on that last week's review. It was just a terrible show. I just really didn't want to say anything positive. So I do take back uh, my rant on Ronda last week. You know, it was a good line, but that doesn't mean I like Ronda. I still don't like her. She still doesn't deserve the championship. But I will say that segment last week was pretty good. But this one, I didn't really care for. This is the one I didn't really care for. Nikki Bella slapped Ronda. You know, honestly. It, like, again, is anybody really looking forward to this? I'm not really looking forward to this match at Evolution. I honestly hope... That, I honestly... I, I want to have hope that WWE can fix this, but... I, I can't have that hope. Considering that they booked a six women's tag, you, you know you can't have evolution without a six women's tag, I guess, because that seems to be the biggest trend when it comes to six women's tags. Let's have multi-man, multi-women matches because we've got Sasha Bailey and Natalia versus the Rice Squad at Evolution. Sasha Banks lost her return match, so. You know, again, I'm just not really... Evolution is not looking too good right now. Ember Moon, Nia Jax, Dana Brooke, and Tamina in a Fatal 4-Way. Now, why was it... Now, now, how come this is just a random Fatal 4-Way? Oh, is it just because that these four women are in a Battle Royal? It's okay just to put these girls in a match? I, again, another match I really didn't care for. The right woman won, at least. The right woman won. Ember Moon got the victory. Eclipse on Tamina. Yeah. Welcome back, Tamina. You're 0-2. You're 0-2 now since your return. Yeah, I, I, bet, I bet you're proud to be on Monday Night Raw. Um... The breast cancer thing again. I don't tend to talk about the breast cancer stuff, so I'm gonna, so I'm gonna skip it. Titus O'Neil was doing it this week. Um. And finally, guys, the main event. This is probably the best part of Raw, in my opinion. This was the best part of Raw. Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins take on Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre for the Raw Tag Team Championships. Dean and Seth Rollins get the victory. They are the new Raw Tag Team Champions giving the assist 
to uh, Braun Strowman because Drew McIntyre attacked Braun early on in the show. So Strowman, you know, wanted to seek revenge on Drew McIntyre. So this left Ziggler all alone in the ring to get curve stomped and lose the Raw Tag Team titles. And then, and now fight, and then the shocking, the shocker happens. The shocker finally happens. Dean Ambrose. Finally, for the first time since 2014, has turned heel. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Dean Ambrose has finally, he's finally done it. They win the Raw Tag Team titles, and then he turns on Seth Rollins. Now... I am very, very happy that Dean Ambrose is finally a heel. WWE finally pulled the trigger, and, and honestly, I believe this was the right time to do it. Roman's out. Roman is now gone. There's no reason to have the shield anymore. You know, what's the point having the shield if there's no Roman? So Dean Ambrose finally unleashes his fury on Seth Rollins and beats him and beats him up and beats him up, and beats him up, and then finally, the final part, where he delivered dirty deeds, on the concrete floor. And, I really liked, uh, Michael Cole's commentary, on the, on the turn, because it was really great, and, and, and seeing the reaction to the crowd, seeing Ambrose turning heel, was also great, because, you played with the emotions. See, this is the type of shit I want WWE to do. You people want me to be positive about, about WWE? This is what we need to see. They need to play up to the crowd and, and share their emotions. This was the perfect time to turn Ambrose heel. The fans were in shock. They were in disbelief that Ambrose would turn heel on a night like this. Considering that Roman Reigns will now be undergoing cancer. A blood cancer, because I asked my mum what it was. And... And then this happens. So now so now we finally... So what's the fate for the Raw Tag Team titles then? You know, that's the one question I think we're all going to wonder. What is the fate of the Raw Tag Team titles? Now that Dean Ambrose has turned heel, is Seth Rollins going to find himself a new partner? Or, 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 the, or the titles going to be vacant? I think they're just going to be vacant. I think the Raw Tag Team titles are going to be vacant. And, and, and Dolph and Drew, I think Dolph and Drew are going to go go on their uh, separate ways because Drew McIntyre is now feuding with Braun and Ziggler, I think he's just going to go on his own. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see what goes down. It's going to be very, very interesting, interesting to see what goes down. And that was your Monday Night Raw, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. That was your Monday Night Raw. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Hit the thumbs up if you guys did. Hit the thumbs up if you guys did enjoy the, enjoy the, enjoy the review. Comment your opinions down below on your thoughts on Monday Night Raw. And also be sure to subscribe to this channel if you have not done so. And be sure to follow me on my Twitter at pbarntine as well. Thank you all so much for joining me for this raw review, and I'll see you all tomorrow for my SmackDown Live review. See you guys then.